Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we're going to be taking a look at the early executioner novels written by the series creator Dom Pendleton. So sit back, relax and let's get to it. The Executioner, also known as Mac Bolan, was a monthly men's action adventure paperback book series published between 1969 and 2020. Following the exploits of Vietnam soldier Mac Bolan and his wars against organised crime and international terrorism. The series has sold more than 200 million copies since its 1969 debut instalment, War Against the Mafia. The regular series comprised an astonishing 464 novels as of December 2020 when the series ended. Every other month the Executioner series was complemented by the release of a Super Bolan, which was twice the length of a standard Executioner novel. There were 178 Super Bolans as of December 2015 when that series ended. The Executioner was created and initially written by American author Don Pendleton, who penned 37 of the original 38 Bolan novels. He didn't write number 16. In 1980, Pendleton licensed the rights to Gold Eagle and was succeeded by a collective of ghostwriters. Some pinnacle printings in the middle of Pendleton's original series carried a photo and brief article on the author, showing that Pendleton was not just a house name. Since its inception in 1969, the Executioner series spawned several spin-off series, including Able Team in 1982, Phoenix Force, also in 1982, and Stony Man, the series into which Able Team and Phoenix Force were eventually merged in 1991. The Executioner is often cited as the inspiration for the Marvel Comics character The Punisher, who also fights the Mafia, and the Destroyer series of novels, as well as James Glickenhouse's films The Exterminator from 1980 and The Exterminator 2, from 1984. The premise of the series is as follows. So Sergeant Mac Bolan is a soldier in the US Army serving as a sniper in the Vietnam War. It is in these jungles where Bolan honed his military capabilities and his deadly accuracy. His 97 confirmed kills give birth to the nickname he will carry for the rest of his life, the Executioner. Amidst the chaos of war, Bolan also earned the moniker Sergeant Mercy for his compassion and willingness to help innocent Vietnamese citizens put in harm's way or wounded by the conflict around them. During his tour of duty, Bolan was called home on emergency leave to bury his family, who were killed by their father, Sam Bolan, in a triple murder-suicide. Upon his return home, Bolan learned loan sharks from a local branch of the Mafia family had forced his sister, Cynthia, into a life of prostitution to pay back the family debt. Upon learning the news, his father could not bear it and committed the horrendous act. Only Bolan's 14-year-old brother Johnny survived his wounds. Bolan realised that the real enemy was not in the jungles of Vietnam, but at home. The Mafia's schemes affected everyday innocent civilians such as his own family, using the tactics he learned during his military combat. Bolan refused to return to Vietnam and instead took up his war against the Mafia. City by city, he strikes ruthlessly to bring down the Mafia and to clean the country of this horrific criminal organisation. His actions would divide opinions. Some government and law enforcement officials were pleased with his efforts, while some sought to bring his war to an end. In the end of Book 39, the government offered Bolan amnesty under the condition that he work for them. Bolan accepts and emerges under the name Colonel John Phoenix, beginning his war against terrorism and the KGB. So we'll take a look through my early Executioner novels, and this is the very first one that launched the series, War Against the Mafia. And I have to say, having read this one now, it's a really, really tight read. What a great, great start to the series. It's superb. There's no messing around. It's straight to the point, um, but the writing is there. There's a real quality to Don Pendleton's writing. He's not just some sort of hack. This is obviously not his first novel. He's quite accomplished and gets straight down to the point um it seemed military accurate for my basic knowledge you know with the way that the guns sort of were referred to and um it, yeah it's great it's a really really good sort of fun introduction to the series and i do enjoy it and it is incredibly satisfying um there's some uh there is some comedy mixed in with this and some real irony um the uh the sex scenes are <laughs> quite quite an eye opener and a bit more unusual than what you might expect um it is a great great introduction to the series and um 
I absolutely love this one. So that's the, the very first one in the series. All the books we're going to see today, I got fairly recently and I've been meaning to get, I've been waiting for like a little job lot of these to turn up and one did fairly recently. And they were all luckily first editions. And I don't really know if the books were reprinted back in the day or if they were just went and had the one print run. Certainly the early books were reprinted um, in the early 80s um, because they were super popular. And they were also released on audio book as well in a lot of cases. Here's book two here, Death Squad. Not quite as nice uh, condition here. And they've not sort of settled into any sort of house style yet. Also copyrighted 1969. Number three here, which I believe might be... Yeah, I think this is the first... I believe this is the first Gil Cohen cover. There's a little signature down the bottom there. But um, the chap who did go on to draw a lot of the... Uh, beautiful artwork for these early ones uh, we've done got a dedicated book on his executioner artwork to look at at the end and uh, it's really really something this is book three here death mask and as you can see they're not particularly long books so you know sort of 150 pages um so you can get through them pretty quickly book four here so he's off to miami now great jacket on that one Book five, Continental Contract. Matt Bellin cuts a bloody path through the south of France, his new battleground. So he gets around a bit. This copy is very, very nice indeed. A lot of these uh, slightly later ones um, appear to have been unread. So I do count myself very lucky to, to find this little lot. The series was so, so long lived and I've not got any idea of what the highlights are past the original Don Pendleton run. So I'm hoping that uh, I'm going to have some great comments on this video and people are going to point me to the ones which uh, are worth reading beyond number 38. Back into New York now. Race to prevent a political assassination. Book seven. And although they're quite pulpy, they don't feel that way. You know, when you look when you look through them, when you read them, they are, uh, I said, really great little thrillers. These Chicago Wipeout, book eight, using that same sort of image of Bolin on the back there, sort of become the logo. Interesting, they got an advert for Kent Menthol in there, not the Pall Mall that um, Bolin smokes in the series. I wonder if they ever approach them to say, would you like to uh, advertise in our books? <laughs> Caribbean Kill for book 10. Uh, we haven't got book number nine. And you'll find um, there's a few um, jumps around in my little run here of the original Pendleton ones. Book 13 here, Washington IOU. into the nation's capital as I said this is just coming in at 185 fairly big big print pages there September 1972 for that one I suppose these really are the the cream of the uh, the men's adventure genre aren't they they really are they typify it number 15 then panic in Philly Mac Bowen invades the city of brotherly love. <laughs> Put the flash on the front there. Eight million copies in print. Major film series coming. Well, that never really appeared, did it? They did do audiobooks. They did a couple of comic book adaptions by uh, Don and his uh, his wife, Linda. But they never, uh, never had a, an actual movie or tv series sadly would have been brilliant wouldn't it now this is um this is the only one of that original one which isn't written by don pendleton number 16 here by jim peterson and it's not that highly regarded so when i do get around to, to getting this far to read this one i'm gonna 
well, I'll, you know, I'll give it a try, but I don't think it's going to be, um, from by all accounts, it's not great. So uh, it's there simply to uh, to fill the run up. And we've got a slight change in the cover design here. We've got the, the black spines now. As you can see, there were a bit of a mishmash going up there until they went to white. And now, for the foreseeable future, they're all in these distinctive black spines. They've kept uh, Gil Cohen's head and shoulders there of Mac. Here he is in New Jersey for this one. And yes, look, yes, there really is a Don Pendleton. <laughs> That familiar byline on millions of copies of Mac Bowen's hard-hitting adventures isn't a pen name. Um, <laughs> for a team of writers or some ghostly hack, Pendleton's for real, and then some. He had written about 30 books before he took on the assignment of writing the first book in the Executioner series, War Against the Mafia. A few years ago, that was the start of what has now become America's hottest action series since the heyday of James Bond. With 16 volumes complete in the series and three more on the drawing board, Don has little time for writing anything but executioner books, fan mail and royalty endorsements. <laughs> oh, interesting. So Don, said, Don completes each book in about six or seven weeks. At the same time, he's gathering and directing the research for his next books. Some of the stories do seem more real than fiction, don't they? A much decorated veteran of World War II, Don saw action in the North Atlantic U-boat wars, the invasion of North Africa, and the assaults on Iwo Jima and Okiwawa. He later led a team of naval scouts who landed in Tokyo preparatory to the Japanese surrender. As if that weren't enough, he went back for more in Korea too. Before turning to full-time duty at the typewriter, Don held down passions as a railroad tele telegrapher, air traffic controller, aeronautical systems engineer, and even had a hand in the early ICBM and moonshot programs. Wow, we. He's the father of six and now makes his home in a small town in Indiana. He does his writing amidst a unique collection of weapons, photos, and books. Most days it's just Don, his typewriter on his dog, a German shepherd, St. Bernard, who hates strangers, sharing long hours with Mac Bowler and his relentless battle against the Mafia. Well, that's pretty cool, isn't it? How often do you get such a comprehensive biography of the author? I mean, you know, nowadays you might get a paragraph or two, and perhaps back in the 30s and 40s, Penguin sort of went to town with their autobiographies, but that's really something, isn't it? And I suppose it's nice to put a bit of a a face behind the name isn't it really you know and this one number 18 texas storm and uh it was mentioned that um you know pendleton does make a little appearance himself in in the backs of the books and that's really cool i think 19 here detroit death watch he's going all around the country you could almost say formulaic destruction of the uh of the mafia on his way <laughs> and I wonder, I'm sure it must have inspired much more than just the Punisher books, in all honesty. St. Louis Showdown, number 23 here. Yeah, these are beautiful, beautiful copies. And I see Gil Cohen there has got a cover credit, so we'll have a look at that Gil Cohen book in a minute, because it's great. Um, and it's all the beautiful original artwork for us to have a look at. At number 29, Command Strike. Great. It says there across the top there now, 20 million copies sold. Just incredible, really. Number 30, Cleveland Pipeline. Really nice detailed cover there. You spot Gil Cohen's signature along the bottom. Thirty-two, Tennessee Smash. <laughs> Looks a little bit like her Diana Rigg, didn't she, from the Avengers? There we are. Same sort of. Um, mini biography on the back there it's not been on the last few and then they popped it on again for number 32 33 Monday's mob <laughs> bazooka there x 
excellent. I've got to admit, when I was reading that first one, I could not put it down. It was really, really great. I'm uh, going to be getting through two or three a week of these, I think, until I've I've read all these because they're so much fun. It really was. Uh, not quite anything I've read in a long time. What's this? Mystery Book Club. And these copies are lovely to read. I just have to be really careful reading because they're such such high grade examples. I'm trying not to uh, damage them at all. This is the uh, the last one then. Don Pendleton's last one, number thirty eight. This is where he gets his it. So look, the last day. This is it. The end of Mac Bone's long second mile into hell. The day to end all days of the execution is one man war against the mafia. If you were there in the beginning or at any point along the way, then you will certainly want to be present for the climax of the most audacious military campaign ever pursued by an American fighting man. Can Bolan pull it off? Can he engineer the final victory, the one that can give meaning and substance to two savage miles in hell? Will he win and survive, or does victory demand the final sacrifice? When the devil takes the body count, then it's got to be Satan's Sabbath. There we are, Don. Don there, so that put his little signature on the back, like he's like signing off, saying this is it, this is the last one. And he's um, handed over the reins to a, a new stable of writers, and this was March 1980. Little respect to the uh, Vietnam veterans by the look of it at the start as well. Good stuff. Well, it's going to be a while before I get that far, but it's good to see. Now, I've got one other one just which isn't, it's part of the Executioner series, but it's the Executioner's War book, also by Don Pendleton. And this basically sums up, it's like an encyclopedia in a way, of all the adventures, places where he's been, uh, the weapons that he uses um, along the way of his first sort of 38 adventures. It's got fan mail and the replies to the fan mail that he wrote. It's, uh, it's really something, this, and um, it's a great little guidebook to the series with all the characters here as well that you met. Copies do vary in price. This one's actually a fairly collectible book, um, and you might struggle a little bit to find it. I mean, there are copies online. May 77, uh, this was published. Um, there are copies online. Um, I was able to pick this one up in the UK for a tenner, which I didn't think was bad. I have seen them as high as $80, 90 um, this one's not mint by any means, it's got a faded spine, but um, it will do as like a little um, bookend and postscript to the original Pendleton rum. But yeah, good stuff. So let's uh, have a look at that book now by Gil Cohen. Okay then, so this is the uh, One Man Army, and it's uh, the action paperback artwork of Gil Cohen. And uh, Gil Cohen did all these early Executioner Jackets, and uh, this one's by uh, Robert Dice and Wyatt Doyle. It's published by New Texture. So this is the lovely hardback edition. They do lots of books sort of in the men's adventure genre, and uh, this is really great, as you'll see. So uh, there's not, it's not like a, a, you know, a real study of the Executioner series. There is obviously uh, um, a look at it and all the original ones. Um, but it really is like a celebration more of the artwork more than anything else. Um, at the time this was written, Linda Pendleton was still with us and she helped out uh, with some of the background work. And uh, you can see there's some great stuff in here. If you're a fan of the series, this is uh, about as close as you're going to get to any sort of uh, analysis of it. Great, great stuff. And there they are. So that's Don Pendleton there. There's Gil Cohen. And they met once in their um, lifetimes um, at the, the Mac Bolan Convention in San Francisco in May 1985. Pendleton himself passed away in 1995 and uh, Linda, his widow, uh, just a, a year or so ago. But here we are. Here are some of the uh, the beautiful jackets. Some of these we've, we've seen. Number number sixteen jacket. And it really is a, a celebration of uh, the fantastic art. I mean, these look like something from James Bond, don't they? Absolutely superb. Great, great artist. That's the boardroom one we saw there. Yeah, she does look a little bit like Diana Reed, doesn't she? That, that lady.
yeah, beautifully reproduced these and a great book to have alongside your executioner collection. Brilliant. He does look a lot like the Punisher, doesn't he? All, all in the black. He's just missing the big skull. I believe the Marvel um, editors acknowledge that the Executioner series was an inspiration for the Punisher, but I don't think Pendleton minded uh, minded too much. Hmm. They're brilliant, aren't they? Very, very good. There's loads to go through. They're all here. So I would be very interested if you're a long time fan of the Executioner series and you know which ones are good after Pendleton left, what are the highlights? If you could pop a little comment below, I think it would be really useful for uh, viewers who are watching this video in the years to come. I'd certainly be interested to know which ones are recommended past Pendleton's original 37 releases. So there you are, I hope you've enjoyed my little look through the Executioner books today and a little look at Don Pendleton. What a series, eh? If you have, do please uh, give the video a thumbs up. Do please hit that subscribe button if you've not already for regular vintage paperback content. And I shall very much look forward to seeing you again very soon with another video. Bye.